Hello, Mrs. Pierce. Hello, love. I've been worried sick, though. Haven't she even let you know? No. You haven't seen Rita, have you, Mrs. Pierce? No, why? Is she missing? Well, I don't suppose she's missing. I suppose she's just forgotten to tell me that she was going to be out for the day or something. She's been getting very cavalier of late, has Rita Fairclough. I've a good mind to have a word. Oh, no. With not hearing from her and being on my own all day in here with the whole cabin to run, quite frankly, I'm ready to drop. Oh, don't worry, Mavis, love. I used to serve in cafe. If he can't cope, I'll be willing to stand in for your love. I didn't say I couldn't cope. Well, it's just the way you look, Mavis. You look as if you've scratched your nasty tables. Can I get you something? Derry. Mavis, you know she's not there. Why do you keep working yourself up, ringing and ringing? Why? Why is she not there? How many more times, Mavis? Because she's gone away. You're going to carry on being stupid, Derek. I'm not being stupid, Mavis. Now, look. She's made a fool of herself and she knows it. And being but Marita she... doesn't think she's made a fool of herself at all. She's convinced that man broke into the house, convinced of it, and she's not a fool, not Rita. He broke in, didn't steal anything, didn't do anything. But things had been moved, like the biscuit tin. He'd been there and she knew it. Yes, he broke in to steal her cream crackers. Well, maybe she's going a tiny bit crackers herself. Oh, I see. She's going off her head and she's vanished, so that's all right. There's nothing uh, to look, worry you make about. make it all sound so... Oh, look at the time. Should have been gone hours ago. <laughs> Bye, love. Morning, Mr. Dodo. Morning, Dodo. Can I have this and four of those chocolate bars, please, mate? No, not those, those. There we go. Not to. You all right, Mavis? Yes, yes, thank you. I, I just wondered... I wondered... You wondered what? I wondered why you'd come all this way for your chocolate bars when Alf's right opposite. Well, the lads on the site are very particular, Mavis. And Alf doesn't stock this particular kind. Oh, doesn't he? No. Well, you'd better ask him to get them in for you, then. Promise. Not a word, nothing. Well, I'd have looked down Viaduct Street and their garage is all locked up and everything. Do you know, I hadn't thought of looking. Well, you can see in the crack in the door and the car's still there. What are we to make of that? I don't know. <sighs> Should we be going to the police? No. But she's disappeared. Mavis, I've had enough of the police. Anyway, all we know is that she's not there right now. I mean, there's no reason to think that anything bad has happened to her. Are you sure there's no reason? What do you mean? Well, I haven't been to the house, but... You must have. You must have been back there. Yes, I have, and it's all perfectly normal. Are you sure? Did you look everywhere? Well, no, I didn't look everywhere. In Rita's bedroom? No. But if you like, I will do. There's no need to look like that, Mavis. There's nobody. Well, was there any sign of anything? No. But I'll tell you this much. I'm sure she's packed her bag and she's gone away of her own accord. She's not been kidnapped, drugged or dragged out screaming. How can you be so sure? Because her little bag of makeup wipes is gone. She always has it hanging by a mirror and it's not there. 
And a moisturiser's been taken. Oh, I'm not sure that's conclusive. It is, Mavis, if you think about it. And a suitcase has gone off the top of the wardrobe. I'm sorry. You're being intelligent and I'm being stupid. I was just so worried whether she'd been... You know, but... Or fled into the night. But you, you don't flee into the night with your makeup wipes. Well, you're quite a detective. Can we go now? I'm in the area today, so uh, if you feel like taking me for lunch at that little Italian place in the precinct. It was only a joke. Butty at the Rovers will be just as acceptable. How can you think of lunch anywhere with Rita still missing? Oh, she's not missing, Mavis. She's just absented herself oh. for a few days. Of course she's missing, Derek. All these say she's missing. Bills, letters from the taxman, the bank, the wholesaler. Rita would never have gone away without telling me what to do with her mail. Never. She'll be back today, Mavis. All refreshed and exemplary again. You see if she's not. Derek, you have an amazing capacity for ignoring unpleasant facts. And you, Mavis, could find an unpleasant fact in a joke book. I'll see you in the Rovers for lunch. If Derek's responsible for that face, I shall run after him and clock him one with my clog. Really? I know. Rita's run off with a toy boy and she keeps sending you postcards from Acapulco. What's up, love? It is Rita. She's gone missing, Bed. Missing as in disappeared? Yes. You mean she's not landed back from her paper round this morning? She's been missing for two days. Two days? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. She's not been here. She's not at home. There's a suitcase and some clothes missing. Well, you know what she's gone and done, don't you? What? She's gone out at Rhoda Gruesome Bradley. And can you blame her? The strokes he's been pulling, she'll be forgetting him in Arrods or somewhere. Are you stupid, too? Pardon? Mm -hmm. Rita would never have gone to London or anywhere else without telling me. She wouldn't just abandon me and the shop and everything. She just wouldn't. Well, she might have just got to the point of saying to hell with it. I mean, it's not unheard of, Mavis. I know that only too well myself. Oh, not Rita. She'd have told me a, a note, a phone call, something. She wouldn't just vanish into thin air like she was... I think you should be telling all this to somebody else, don't you, love? The police. Hey, up, lads. Uh, trying to build your strength up. You need some more spinach. Hey, it does look a bit like Popeye, does Platty. Oh, I. What's the difference between your goalie and Cinderella? Go on. Cinderella got to the bar. Yes, gentlemen. Pints. Two pints, two mineral waters. What's your leg? having mineral water? You and him, no booze for you two today. You're kidding. I only fancy two hours in dirty glasses. Two mineral waters. Right. Yeah. Well, I'll make up tonight. After we've murdered them. Yeah. Hey, talking about building themselves up, who's the big lad sitting with Kevin? No idea. You know, Ali. What's that? A big fella sitting with your players over there. Yeah, well, him? Oh, uh, uh, Jack, do you know who he is sitting with Kevin over there? Yeah, that's Gazza. You know Gazza comes in here with his mum and dad. Loves his family, does Gaza. Oh, of, of course it is, of course. It's Gaza. Gaza. Yes, uh, I didn't recognise him, you know, with his haircut. He's playing for you, isn't he? Hey? Playing for the Rovers, is he? Is he, Jack? Well, he insisted. I mean, him being uh, a regular, I couldn't very well refuse, I, could I? I've not seen him in here before. Me neither. Right, he's a big lad. It's his football you're playing, is it? Not rugby league. Hey, tell you what, Gazza, looks like they've clocked you. Yep. The opposition. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the geezer I'm marking. It's old chap on the end. We're going to win. We're going to win. About the game tonight, Mr Gilroy. What about it, Percy? Have you got an official, a referee? Because if you haven't, I'm your man. Deep knowledge of the game and an actual air of authority. No, I'm sorry, Percy, you're too late. I'm refing tonight. You what? Like I said, I'm refing tonight, as a matter of fact. I've just been and got my whistle. Little belter. You 
You must be joking. You refereeing, you're this lot's trainer. Manager. No way. Oh, and who do you choose? One of your flaming mob, eh? Hey, both? Uh, yes, there would seem to be an element of bias. I mean, unintentional though it may appear. Well, you didn't mind trying to foist him on us, though, did you? You know, this match is beginning to stink. <laughs> what evidence have you got to support? Yes, what evidence? You got giant haystacks there suddenly popping out the woodwork. Now you're trying to put a ringer in charge. I resent that. Uh, excuse me. What do you want? If you're looking for a completely impartial referee, I'd be happy to oblige. You? What do you know about refereeing? Oh, I've got quite a lot of experience, actually. At, at school, you know, when the teams were being picked, I was always the odd one left. Can't think why. <laughs> so I usually ended up refereeing. Whistling Wilton, they called me. Whistling Wilton you'll be again tonight, Derek, if these gentlemen have no objections. Have you gone potty, boss? Shut up, he's a better bet than you because he's thicker. And uh, here's your whistle, Derek. Oh, thank you. Uh, do you mind? Whistling Wilton rides again. <laughs> Yes, I, I see what you mean. Oh, it's you. <laughs> what else did you expect? When the station gets a call from you or Mrs. Fairclough, the message goes out. Get Crichton. Well, I'm sorry. Did I ever tell you I used to take papers from this shop? No. Yeah, when old Biddulph had it. Oh, you... really? Now then, what's all this about Mrs. Fairclough going missing? She is missing. Tell me about it. Well, it's like I told the officer on the phone. Our civil service likes everything in triplicate. We like people to repeat themselves. Very often they can't. Well, I haven't seen Rita for three days now. Oh, have you tried? Tried? Seen her? Of course I've tried. When she didn't come in, I went round to the house. And? It was empty. Hmm. Where's Jenny? Well, Jenny's not living there at the moment. <sighs> when asked why at this stage, might just complicate things. So, how was it? What? The house. Anything disturbed? No. There was some clothes gone and a suitcase, a small hold on. So, wherever she's gone, she's probably gone of her own volition. <laughs> taking her clothes on. Yeah, but she hasn't gone in a car. That's still in the garage. Well, have you been asking anybody if they've seen her? <laughs> Saw her leave the house? No, they'd have told me if they'd seen her, wouldn't mm, they? Not necessarily. Not if they didn't know she was supposed to be missing. Not supposed. Is missing. Look, that's all her mail. Now, if she wasn't missing, she'd have opened it. Something's happened to her. I know it has. Now, like what? I don't know. Look, let's get things in perspective, eh, Mrs. Wilton? Now, you know and I know that Mrs. Fairclough's had a rough time recently. Well, not just recently. For a good few months. Some of it imagined, maybe, but most of it not. And presumably she's had a bust up with Jenny as well. Has she? Yes. So, would it be very surprising if she'd run for cover somewhere? She's a mature woman, free to do what she likes. She's got the money. No, she would have told me. We all like to think we're skin close to somebody. But as often as not, it turns out to be an illusion. Up here's a very private place. Look, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll give her a few more days. I'll give her a chance to realise how much worry and trouble she's causing. And she'll come back looking all sheepish and feeling very sorry for herself. I've seen it a hundred times. All right. If you say so. I do. And you look after things here in the meantime. Well, it's probably another reason why she's just skipped. She knows everything here's in good hands. Thank you. Oh, and I'll go and see the bloke. I think nicked the badge off my car. Should enjoy that. Cheerio. Bye. Oh, Mr. Wilton. Been out and about flogging novelties, have you? <laughs> Takes all sorts. What do you want? I've reported Rita missing. Oh, maybe. It's all right. He doesn't believe me. Nobody believes me. It'll be too late. <laughs> I, I was going to tell you I won't be in tonight. I'm refereeing a football match. But, well, he must have found them. I hope they win, don't you? Well, they seem pretty confident, V. Yeah, well, I don't know how Jack's sulking all week. You know, my dad went city used to lose. He used to go to bed for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> They've got some daft crazies, fellas, haven't they? Very childish. Never seem to grow out of them, either. Not like us women. We have to. Life's so damn serious, isn't it? See ya. See ya, V. Sorry to interrupt. 
I don't suppose you've heard if Rita's turned up. Not as I know of, no. No, it's just with... What? Mavis, reporting a missing to the police. I thought there might have been some news. Mavis has reported a missing? Yes. Didn't you know? No, I didn't. I thought it was time she did, too. The police. Not again. I don't believe all of this. They won't take any notice of Mavis, though. Well, what do you think, then? I mean, do you think she's missing or has she just done a bunk? I've no idea. I wish I did. That's, uh, what did I say? Oh, yes, 175. Thank you. 180, two pounds and three makes five. Thank you very much. Jenny, I've not come to buy anything. I just want to know, Mavis, what you think you were playing at going to the police. Well, I was very concerned about Rita. Why? Something happened to her? Well, we don't know what's happened to her, do I? She's just... She's just gone away. Which I think she's entitled to do, Mavis, at her age, without the police being called in. Have you heard from her? No, but then I haven't been at home, have I? Well, then how do you know she's gone away? Anything could have happened to yes, her. Yes, like she could have booked herself into a four-star hotel or she could have taken a package holiday to Spain. I mean something unpleasant. Mavis, what's going to be unpleasant is when the police get onto my dad again. Or perhaps that's what you wanted, was it? Maybe that was the whole point. Oh, now, Jenny, that's not very fair. No, Mavis, what I think is unfair is when people go telling tales to the police because they're going to drag my dad into this if they can. You know that, oh, don't I you? I don't care what they drag him into. They can do what they like to your father. All I can say is he deserves it because he started all this in the first place. Oh, well, now we know, don't we? Now we know. Well, I only came in for some envelopes. I know I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have said Sit it. Now, Mavis, don't go blaming yourself. Why, not everybody else is blaming me, aren't they? No, I'm certainly not. I think you've done the right thing. You do? You're not just saying that? Of course I do. Oh, uh, you can go before me if you like, love. 17 Maudsley Street. Yes? You've delivered the wrong paper. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the star we oh. get. You should have heard mine, Norman. He can't bite it if he doesn't get the right paper. I'm sorry, would you like to take a star? He wanted it with his breakfast. Well, I'll see it doesn't happen again. Well, I hope not. You should have heard the ructions we had. Oh, look. You see, that was my fault as well. I must have marked it up wrong. So Norman's had to suffer. It sounds as if it might have done him good. And what was it you want? Uh, envelope? Mavis, <laughs> calm down. Yes, well, I will. Look, why don't you go and get yourself a coffee? I can step in here oh, for half an hour. Go no, and put your feet it's up. It's very kind of you. But what time did you start this morning? Oh, well, about um, half six. And you've been trying to run this place by yourself? <laughs> now, come on, Mavis. It's not going to do Rita or anybody else any good, you driving yourself into the ground, is it? Right. Here, Tina. Oh, hiya. Hey, aren't you going to ask me how my leg is? How's your leg? Well, it's not so bad, thanks. It's nice of you to ask. Yeah, well, I'm like that. What food have you got on, Betty? Well, you've got a choice. Hot pot pies or sandwiches? I'll have a pie, I think. Do you want a pie? Yeah, go on, man. Right. Two pies. Here, Tina. What? Hey, Come here, I, I want to ask you something. Look, I'm working out, so I can't stand here talking. Oh. Betty, I'm going to shift this lot out to the yard, all right? Oh, Jack will shift it. Look, where's he got to? It's easy if I do it myself. I'm sick of catching my shins oh. on it. So that's uh, two pies you want? Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Back in a minute. Hey? Hey, hey. Where's he off to? I've no idea. Perhaps you thought I was going to ask him to pay for all this lot. <laughs> Jenny? Hello. Uh, don't suppose you've heard anything from Rita? No. Back to stay, are you? For the time being, yeah. Well, I'm sure she'll be glad to find you here when she gets back. Bye. See you then. Yeah. Hello. All on your own, are you? Yes. But not for long. I'm expecting Derek back any minute. Yeah. So there's no sign of Rita yet, then. Wonder where she could be. Got any theories? Do you know your drain pipe sprung a leak? 
If we get any freezing, it'll be like a skating rink out there. Yes, thank you, Mr. Slipton. Uh, yes, but we, we, we thank you for pointing it out all the same. Oh, it's my pleasure. Could I have my paper, please? Uh... <clears throat> 20p. Right? Yes. Well, you're not going. Well, I had intended. But I, I was just going to make a cup of tea if you'd like one. Well, that's very neighbourly of you. Bye now. Bye. Nothing the matter, is there? No. Tell me about the war. I'm not dragging you away from your studies, am I? Oh, no, they can wait. Only, uh, I noticed you're letting yourself back into number you know. seven. You know? Yes, love. Uh, fine, please, Bessie. OK. Oh, um, just a bit of lemon. And a bit of lemon. Should we sit down? So, listen, are you, uh, have you moved back in again or what? No, I've moved back into the town here. Hi, kid. What are you doing here? Meeting somebody. Evening, Vera. Evening. Evening. Well, you'll have to wait and see, won't you? Uh, can I have a glass of white wine while I'm waiting? No, we're not, kid. Have somewhere, then, are you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, just so long as you're not planning to go out somewhere as well. I'm uh, working, Vera. Working very hard to stay sane and pleasant, which is not always easy. Tall on. Thank you. Go. Oh, before I forget. Yeah, a present for you. No, Jenny, no. I can't look after you properly, so just take it and don't argue, please. But you can't afford it. I can't afford it. I'm working, aren't I? What else am I going to spend it on? Thanks. I take it there's no word from Rita, then? No. I'd like to know what she's playing at. Well, I went to see Mavis today. I told her that she had no business going to the police, but you know what she's like. Mm. I should be expecting a visit from them then. Mm. Don't worry, I'm getting used to it. Mention Alan Bradley, by all means, remind them of what's gone on in the past. But still say that I think he might. No, no, I think we should leave them to form their own conclusions. I think perhaps you're right. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, where's Derek got to? Why well, can't we just shut the shop up? I think we're going to have to. But he did say he'd be here, only. He thinks I'm being silly and letting my imagination run away with me. Ah. Oh, oh. Derry. I know. Sorry I'm late. Now we're all right. I got held up at the warehouse. You wouldn't believe the run we've had on our monster accessories. There's not a set of fangs to be had between here and Birmingham. No, Derek, we're going to have to go now. There's plenty of change in the till, so yes. we'll try not to be long. All right, but I still think that... Oh, we know what you think, Derek. I don't want you to be arrested for wasting police time. Oh, they'll have their work cut out if they try. They will, yes. The sergeant was quite impressed when you told him you were Councillor Barlow. You think so? Yes. It's not always an advantage, you know. Sometimes they can put people's backs up before they even know what you've come for. Oh. What? That's the policeman I saw before. And you're not keen on it? I don't think he's very keen on me. He told me I was panicking. I'm quite not, if you'd good reason to. Well, he didn't think I had. I'm not being silly, am I, dear? No. Look, Rita's missing, and we want to know what they're doing about it. Yes. And the longer it's gone on, the more I can't believe that Rita would just go away and leave everything and not make an effort to contact anybody. Yes, well, you did tell me this before. What have you done about it? What I mean is, have you got anything new? No, no. No. Look. What is new is that when Mrs. Wilton spoke to you before, Rita had only been missing a couple of days. Now it's been over a week. True. Oh, that little bit older then, aren't we? Yeah, but surely that makes it more serious. You could say that. Yes, that's what we are saying. You could also say that as time passes and there's no sign of her, I mean, no hospital is reported admitting her or anything like that, then that suggests she's all right. Hasn't come to any harm, but just fancies a bit of time by herself, so. Yeah. I... No! I... I'm sorry, but it's, it's just too easy to say that. So what would you say? Well, what about everything that happened before? I mean, surely you know about that. What? You mean this character she was living? Yeah, Alan Bradley. Yes. Well, yeah, we know all about him. Certainly we do. So you think that may be why she's gone away? To get away from him? Yeah, she might have. There's not much we can do about it, though, is there? Not unless he's actually been making threats. Or unless he's murdered her. I suppose you would do something then, would you? Oh, yes, we would. Why, have you any reason for thinking that's what's happened? Well, I 
I mean, he's already been in court charged with attacking her. Mm. Well, ever since he came out of prison, she's lived in fear of him. I mean, she's been terrified he was going to do something to her. Especially when he went and got himself a job right across the street from her house. <laughs> You're not telling me that's a coincidence. Yeah, but she's already accused him of breaking into her shop when it wasn't him and of breaking into the house. But doesn't that tell you how frightened she was of him? All right. I mean, she, she was wrong on the other two occasions, but doesn't it just go to show you what she's thinking? OK. I'll buy it. Thanks. No, I'm not saying that. Not yet. But I think a few discreet inquiries might be in order. Just stir things up a bit and see what flows to the surface, eh? Jan? Are you all right, love? Nothing wrong, is it? No, I'm just on my way back from Polly. Oh, well, I don't think I could manage the study, but I wouldn't mind the hours. <laughs> hey, listen, do you want me to make your meal tonight? Uh. No, I don't think that would be a good idea, though. Why? Well, I don't think I should be in the house when Rita's not there, you know. Well, she won't know, will yeah, she? Yeah, I know, but... I'll tell you what, I'll take you out for a burger and chips, how's that? All right, then. Good. Listen, i better get back, so I'll pick you up when I finish, OK? OK, then. See you later. Ta-ra. Ta-ra. Hey, do you think I've got enough time to have a bath and do my hair in four hours? Oh, I should hope so. <laughs> then I'll stand you out. Don't you think so now? You see, you've got to give these young folks a chance to get out. She shouldn't be in here every night, not at her age. Well, she gets paid for it. Well, I know, but there's more to life than working, you know. Anybody been visited by the police yet? What are you about? Why, should we be? Well, I believe there's an investigation going on as to the whereabouts of Mrs. Firthlough. Why, where do you think she is? Well, that's a question. I mean, when you think back of all that's happened to that woman over the last 12 months, mm. I mean, you think, what could happen next? I mean, in an hospital once, wasn't she? Then the court case. Mm. Oh, dear me. Why that man got away as easy as Yes, he Alan, fine, is it? <laughs> yes, please, Bessie. And uh, a bit of lemon for my daughter. Right. Mm. What was that you were saying, Percy? Just that the police are uh, trying to find Mrs. Fairclough. Well, I'm very pleased to hear it. The sooner they find her, the sooner it will stop all this idle gossip, won't it? Yeah, there yeah. is that. Mm. I shall help them all I can, and I'm sure everybody else around here will know, won't we? Well, yeah, yeah. of course. Everything gets so dusty. If I climb into the window, dear, do you think you can pass me these things? Whatever you say, Maeve, I'm just the assistant. Oh, well. Oh, you caught us right in the middle of it, Derek. So I see. I shouldn't stand still for too long, Derek. You're liable to get sprayed with snowflakes. <laughs> yes, I'll keep well out of your way. <laughs> I'm sorry, we're not... Detective Sergeant Crichton. We had a bit of a chat earlier on today. Yes, of course. Well, we'll go in here by the looks of that. <laughs> Councillor Barlow, Mr Wilton. Evening. Right, well, it's really you I've come to see, Mrs Wilton. Me? I'd like you to come along with me to the mortuary. We've discovered the body of a woman in a derelict house. Been rather badly mutilated, I'm afraid. But I'd like you to come along and have a look and tell us whether or not you think it's Mrs. Fairclough. What was she doing there, Derek? But all alone in a derelict house. Now, you don't know it is Rita. <laughs> police think it is. No, they think there's an outside chance it may be. More than an outside chance, or they wouldn't have brought me here. Would they? It's all right, all right, calm down. Now. Well, it's easy for you to say. Look, would you like me to go in there? You? Well, to, 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 to identify her. No. No, it's something I've got to do. Don't ask me to explain why it... Just is. That's the way you want it. I just want it to be over and done with. I've just got to know one way or the other. All right, Mrs. Wooten, if you're ready. Are you all right, Mrs. Wooten? Yes, sir. Yes, thank you. You can come with her if you'd like. No, me? Oh, no, no, I, I don't think so. Um, we have discussed it. 
like it's something she would rather do herself. Right. Well, let's get it over with then, shall we? can't get into it. That's why I went the Rovers. It's not that I find it hard. I don't. It's just I can't concentrate. And the more I try, the more my mind goes blank. And every time that phone rings, every time there's a knock at the door. Yeah, I know. Look, Jen, if you think it would help to get out of here for a bit, it's not doing you any good, is it, being stuck in here all on your own? It'll be all right. Well, if you change your mind, you know where we are. I think if it hadn't been for my dad being nearby, they'd gone round the bend days ago. But why did she have to do it, Sal? Why did she have to take off without a word to her soul? She's caused all this bother. I mean, what have we done to her? Thank you very much. I'm sorry you had to go through all that. It had to be done, as I'm sure you'll appreciate it. Was it? God for that. Take me home, Derek. Thank you, Sergeant. Look, if you'd like a cup of tea no, or something. No, thank you. No. Just take me home. Yes, come on. Selena! Selena! Nice one, Eddie! You really told her there. Oh, you could charm the bird out of the trees, <laughs> Eddie. I'm sorry, Mrs. Green. I don't know how I forgot to. Hey, on your own, are you? Yes, since nine o'clock. Derek had an early start. I don't know how I've got through this morning, dear, dear. Honest. Looking at the state of you, neither do I. I just can't get that poor woman in the mortuary out of my mind. The thought that Reed. Now, come on, Mavis, stop it. It's not helping anybody you carrying on like this, is it? Well, I can't help it. Oh, look, I've got the rest of the morning to myself. Why don't you just call yourself off upstairs for a couple of hours and have a lie down? I can manage here. Well, it wouldn't do any good, would it? I wouldn't look, be able to sleep. I am not asking you. I'm telling you now. Come on, get up those stairs. Well, if you don't mind. I wouldn't have offered if I did, would I? Now, go on. <laughs> I, I am capable of answering the phone, you know. Cabin? Oh, yes, hello, Mrs Bottomley. Uh, yeah, just hang on a minute, please. Go on. Yeah, sorry about that. Now then, what can we do for you? Tina! Tina! Look! Will you just give me a chance to explain? Look, Eddie, I may not be as bright as a North Star, but I'm certainly not dim enough to fall for some daft tale about you having to look after your mother. It's true. Look, I can't stop now. Boss is around. I'll catch up with you when I finish. You're working tonight. Yes, I'm working. I had last night off, remember? Well, I'll see you. Bradley. What do you want? This is Detective Inspector Jordan. He's in charge of the search for Mrs. Fairclough. He'd like a word. I know nothing about Mrs. Fairclough's disappearance. Okay. No one suggested you did, Mr. Bradley. We're talking to everyone that knew Mrs. Fairclough. We greatly appreciate your cooperation. Can I help you? It's all right, boss. They just want to work with me. They have as many words as they want, but not in my time. This won't take more than a few minutes, Mr. Jones. This is Detective Inspector Jordan. Yeah, I know who you are. So, what do you want with him? Just a few questions. Anywhere a bit more private than here. You better use my cabin. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. All right, the show's over. Get back to work. Sometimes I have to tell you. 
I don't know where Mrs. Fairclough is. I've no idea where she might go. And quite frankly, I don't care. Ever since I came to work here, I've had enough of Mrs. Fairclough, and I've had enough of you lot and all. Now, come on, Mr. Bradley. This sort of attitude isn't being very helpful to anybody, is it? What sort of attitude do you expect, eh? He tried to pin the robbery at the cabin on me. That's not true. And then they tried to nail me for the break-in at Mrs. Fairclough. And now you reckon I've got something to do with her disappearance. I mean, where is it all going to end, eh? Just calm down, Mr. Bradley, eh? Nobody's accusing you of anything. Well, it doesn't look like that to me. Look, a woman has disappeared. We want to find her. We're questioning a lot of people. If you think you're something special in all this, I can assure you that's all in your mind. Now, you're quite sure you have no idea where Mrs. Fairclough may have gone? No. No relatives you can think of, no friends, no links from her past that we could follow up? I've told you, no. Has she contacted you at all since she left home? You're joking, honey. I'd be the last person in this world that you'd contact. We do have to ask these questions, Mr. Bradley. All right, boss. Well, I don't think we need to keep you any longer. If you do hear from her or remember anything you think might be useful to us, I expect to hear from her. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Finished? Yes, thanks. For now. And what was all that about this time? When investigating the disappearance of Rita Fairclough, they thought I might know something about it. And do you? No, I don't. They're making quite an habit of it, aren't they, coming here, chatting to you? Yeah. I'm just about as much as I can take, I don't mind telling you. I'm not in raptures over the situation myself. 